Uh, I'm Julia Bancroft. I uh, moved here approximately five years ago. Uh, my husband and I came here with the hopes of uh, retirement. Came here to find a piece of paradise because we thought we had found it. Hey, my name's Randy Cleveland. I'm a geologist. We have about 33 acres here and about a thousand feet of lake frontage. Our kids and my wife spent most of the summers in the lake. We just loved it down there. When we started looking at properties in this area, we became aware that there were certain lakes that um, were just not viable. Around 2003, we began noticing some particles in the water. and We weren't sure at that point what it was. Very disillusioned to find out what was really going on in the background. There have been mink farmers here for probably 50 years or more, um, but because they didn't um, farm in the best practices possible, they let pollution take over and the lakes turn green. see it yet, but yes we will. It's coming up right here. That's where we want. We stop her here and we'll step up. Jim, that is sweet smelling stuff, isn't it? So you can really smell a horrible stench here. Let me zoom in on her or pan around a bit, play the game with the camera. Right here in Yarmouth County, the municipal bylaws say you can't have a mink pin within 500 feet of a body of water. Just look. That's what they do anyway. And I don't know if you can see this on the film, but this is kind of a, basically a thick cesspool that really smells. They have those constantly baited. That's a live trap during summer, and they use a dead trap during winter. That's a mink trap. Don't touch her with your hands, Johnny. Hold on, wait, hold that up. Let me get a close-up picture of it. So... Get a picture of the smell. Do you want to drink it? Ooh! Part of what they're pumping into the mink that ends up getting pumped into the water. They add phosphorus to the feed to make them have more appetite. I, I, I guess it's, it's, it's good for the, for the pelts and the industry. And the result is the green slime in the water. I don't know what to tell you, but that's not good stuff. So that's coming draining right from that mink farm that's right up there, huh? Everywhere in this hollow gets trapped by the road. It creates a kind of a dam. And that's a public culvert acting as a public sewer for a private industry. Lovely stuff. Well, I think I'm going to back up a little bit first. When sure. I said that the farming was here for 40 or 50 years, it has been. But it's been small farms. You know, they might have a thousand mink or 500 mink or something to supplement their income. Now we have farms with over 250,000 mink. All of those mink poop. <laughs> Where is that going? There is no way that that amount of manure can be managed. My wife started calling the local Department of Environment office here in Yarmouth. And after putting us off and saying it was um, uh, climate change and all sorts of things. Uh, they came out and had a look around and eventually told us that it was blue-green algae in the water. Headwaters of virtually any 
place in Canada are the cleanest water that there is. And as the water goes down the streams and lakes and it picks up pollutants from industry, from farms, golf courses, all those kinds of things. In our particular case, all the pollution starts at the headwaters. That's where there's 47 farms or something located um, using very poor farm practice, manure running into the lakes and streams. And of course, as it comes down, it dilutes. So although I'm the last lake here on Lake Vaughan, um, ours is the most diluted and ours is probably the healthiest lake in the chain. But it doesn't mean it's okay. Blue green algae uh, produces toxins. The most common toxins that they produce are microcystins. Microcystin is the name of the toxin it gives off, which kills. Those microcystines attack the kidneys and liver mostly. Small amounts apparently when you know when children get their mouth in it when they're drinking, when they're when they're swimming, and quite a few cases of dogs being out playing with the family sort of the thing. They lap up a bunch of water and die. This pollution that's been going on for decades has been devastating. And people who bought properties there, intending to enjoy them for generations and pass them on to their kids, they're now useless to them. They can't sell them, they can't enjoy them. It's, uh, the water is basically, at certain times of the year, it poisonous. At the same time, our government is using our tax dollars to open more mink farms. This is where it just becomes uh, almost absurd because you have a government that is with various different arms of government. They're, they're promoting the industry, they're funding the industry, they are creating the regulations for the industry, they are doing all the monitoring, and if there's any, uh, anything that needs to be penalized, if there's, you know, they're, the punitive measures, they're all coming from the same place. The, the conflict of interest is incredible. That lake I was telling you about that had the high E. coli count of 2,700, it took them 14 days to come and check that out. And we sent them videos of manure running down the bank. 14 days. I began doing some research and it was suggested by everyone that the best way to attack this problem would be to get significant regulations in place from the municipal level and from the provincial level because the industry at the time was completely unregulated. The Department of Agriculture basically was trying to uh, get the industry to abide by best farming practices. But everything was purely voluntary. There's no reason for anyone to actually follow any of these practices. And clearly from what I found in the field, there were a lot who weren't. Just let me give you an example. In the regulations it says, I'm just sort of, um, you know, paraphrasing here, but it says that all manure, all waste, carcasses, all of those things must be transported to an official 
government certified location and disposed of. That sounds good. We were really excited when we read that. And then it says, or you can compost on site. Well, that's exactly what they're doing now. The mink farmers are not providing anything for Nova Scotians. They cite the benefits of, they use a lot of fish waste that would normally just be of no use to anything. They say that that's a real economic boon. There's jobs. Um, as far as I understand, the jobs are seasonal and pretty disgusting. So I'm not sure, you know, how many of these jobs would be considered either high quality or uh, full time. And when you balance that against the environmental damage, and and I'm not even going anywhere near what it does to the animals, I'm like that, that's a that's a whole other sphere of horror. I think there is no acceptable way to farm fur-bearing animals. Uh, it, it made so much sense when we would have frozen to death on an ice floe if we didn't have fur clothing. That's great. Right now, there's options. <laughs> the idea of in investing in this industry based on a fashion whim, which is basically what it is. And all over the world, governments, people are saying, we don't want this anymore, and they're being shut down. And here in little old Nova Scotia, what are we doing? We're saying, big money maker, let's, let's go with this. I, I don't know, I, I just think they're taking money over our health. And I don't know, I didn't think there was a bigger issue than um, people's health and well-being. We're very pleased to be here, but we can't swim in our lake. Uh, that was a big reason to come, so our grandchildren could come visit and swim in the lake. And uh, now that's over. Well, I haven't swam in the lake here since, you know, now it's eight years. That's a long time. I was expecting a response from my fellow Nova Scotians, and the only response I got was from people who were themselves injured 
people who live like Julie along along the water and who are who are being personally right in your face kind of damaged by it. It's that old NIMBY thing in my backyard. Makes you cry. Because I, I know if we'd have had a political reaction that, that was serious, we'd have we'd have had changes. People didn't pick up on it and say this is our water. It's it's all our water. 